stuff yourself, um, settling in St. Eddie and how do you sort of found this place as, as just sort of a base and how the boys really sort of looking at buildings as well? Um, yeah, it's been great. Obviously, we spent some time in, in Paris uh, and then moved down here. Uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's a great little setup where we are. We've got some good uh, recovery facilities, a good gym, you know, brilliant pitch, weather's been good. So, yeah, the prep, we started um, two days ago, good day yesterday, another good training day today, and then straight into test week for Georgia. So, I know everyone's adapted well, uh, and we're into it. Oh, I think look, you know, they're they're a better side than what a lot of people give them credit for. Beat Wales in you know in Cardiff, beat Italy last year, so two of the the Six Nations side. Um, they're definitely growing their game. You know, always very strong set piece. You know, big wrestling forwards. Um, but I think they've added some some kick counter, and you know they're playing a lot better off unstructured play. So they're obviously evolving their game, but they've still got a very very strong set piece focus. So you know for us, is, it'll be a good set piece battle, um, and you know we'll look to go from there. They're a team that's sort of you know openly coming out and say you know they love that sort of set piece battle on the forwards. As, as, you, as a forwards coach, when you hear a team so open about wanting to target that area, how do you sort of respond to that? How does that sort of do you see that lift the group? Um, yeah, it does, but uh, you know it's great. You know, we we love that. You know we got we got belly. We we love that sort of confrontation. So for us, development as a pack, where we've come from over, you know, South Africa, Argentina, New Zealand, twice in France. I think we're getting better. You know, we've shown real improvement. I thought our, our scrum was probably the best it's been against France, both on ours and their ball. Um, so we're, you know, we're, we're making good progress, but now we're into, you know, into World Cup, which so it's the start of the knockout phase. Sorry, the, the group phase is now, um, and you won't win any big games in this tournament unless your your forward pack fronts up. So there's going to be a great challenge for us. Um, were you there with England 2018 with those infamous training sessions? Yep. Were your recollections of them? And, uh, have you kind of Oh, a little bit. I think, look, that's six years ago. That was five years ago. Those were, you know, what you might refer to now as probably old school training sessions. So, you know, with a little bit of buff. Um, but good, you know, that condition of players. And we, we've been looking for something similar amongst ourselves here. You know, I think probably the last two to three weeks, we've had, we've had everybody fit, you know, belly fit, Nella fit, um, all, the, all the sort of players that we've got available. Um, and our set pieces, that particularly the way that we train, um, has has been a lot more robust and a lot more competitive. But as competitive as we make that, there needs to be transfer. It's no good training for four weeks leading into a into a World Cup and not getting the transfer on on a Saturday. So, you know, that's the the big thing that we're looking to do is to make sure that we get that transfer on the on the weekend. What impact did that session have on the young guys who were on the receiving? Must have sort of put the wind up them and maybe thought, "Wow, well, this guy's in business." Like, what was that mentality like after that? Um, oh, look, I, I'd rather talk much. I'd rather talk about Australia um, and where we are now. Like, it, you know, like I said, it's five years ago. Um, I've done a lot of sessions since then. Um, but yeah, it was, look, it was a good, tough session. It was a good, tough session, um, and and we're trying to replicate that with our boys. You know, with with this Australian pack. So we we'll have a, a we've been making sure we focus on ourselves for this week now, and, and moving into Monday, Tuesday, the focus will shift dramatically over to Georgia and to you know the real threat that they pose. Um, but this is not about stopping them. This is about imposing ourselves. So for us, we're going to be looking to go in the game and to have our set piece set a standard, not sort of be receiving and try and match. You know, we've set our stall out with, with, you know, with people like Belly and the guys that we've got here that we don't want to be an Australian side that achieves parity and then tries to play off that. You want to win a World Cup, you have to be dominant set piece. You know, South Africa proved that 2019. So in order to win this competition, your set piece has to be red hot, and sort of next Saturday is a, the first step of that. Uh, in terms of four years ago, but now, how much like the preparation that Eddie had was clearly with him in 19, is there many differences between the leading periods and how the two sides are tracking from England? Obviously, they had finals and now being with the world, is, can you see those tools being put in place to, to kind of go quite deep as well? Yeah, I think we can go really deep. You know, I, I think one thing which, you know, Eddie said repeatedly is that we've been together really five games as a team. So this is a young team. 
in terms of the age profile. Um, it doesn't have a boatload of World Cup experience, but what it's got is good men, you know, good men in the group um, that are looking forward to this. So, look, Eddie, Eddie had four years into leading into that World Cup. We've had five months. So that's not an excuse, that's a fact. Um, but we feel that we're putting ourselves in a, in a really good position, you know, to be ready for step one, which is Georgia. And then we'll, we'll look to move through the gears to quarterfinals, semifinals, hopefully final. Yeah, look, he's, he's been in and around. He hasn't done as much on feet, um, but we're hoping on Monday he'll, you know, he'll be available to, to train with everybody. So, like I said to you, there's you know, eight, nine weeks to go here, um, and we need to be not cautious, but we need to be aware of, of the situation where, that he's in um, as a veteran player and make sure that we give him the very best opportunity to have a huge impact on the squad. Um, look, I think everybody who's watched Belly knows he can carry the ball. Um, for me, it's the other bits that I've found really exciting about what he's doing. So his defence, I thought it's the best he's defended against France. Um, you know, he put his head in the spokes a few times. He made the most carries in our forward pack, I think just on 14 carries. But he was good defensively, you know, better and much better in the, in the malls and the drives. So, like, the areas that he's been targeting, in all fairness to him, and he's been really... You know, working his plums off, um, we're starting to see real good transfer, which is great for him. You know, developing those other bits of the game, his scrum. You know, I thought he scrummed exceptionally well against Antonio Uni, who's a, a big man, is a top class. You know, that, that French scrum is a good scrum. Um, you know, we've won penalties on there now, our ball. So, really pleased with what he did from a set piece point of view. For me, the most pleasing aspect is what he's the work off the ball, the stuff that he's doing off the ball. That's you know, what this team's going to need and it's what the players in this team value, not just what you do for those those brief moments on the ball, but how you add value throughout the game off the ball. And I think that's where, you know, he's making his biggest strides. We know um, Taniello had a niggle coming into that France game and had big minutes out there. Did he come through that okay? And look, he's spoken about him recently. He's really, really wanted to make a mark on this team. He's learned a way to do it and at a World Cup. Um, how's he tracking and what expectations and hopes do you have for him? Yeah, we, you know, he's. I think the biggest expectations are from him. He sort of glanced at the bench on about 50 minutes, and then everyone put their head down. So stay out there, big fella. You're going all right. Um, but he's gone well. You know, he's gone really well for a guy who played, who hasn't played for a long time. Played 40 minutes against Tonga A, and then I think 12 minutes against the, the Kiwis at the MCG. For him to play against one of the biggest packs in European rugby and go, I think he was 65, 68 minutes deep. Um, winning scrum penalties, carrying the ball, defending well, I think was a huge statement of intent from him of where he is um, and the hard work that, that John Clark and, and uh, you know, Nigel Astor Jones, Warwick Harrington, all those guys are doing off the pitch to put him in a real position to add value. And him himself, you know, he's really knuckled down. He's probably the lightest he's been, so he's really applying himself. So, yeah, we've got, you know, we've got, uh, we hope that he, he delivers to, to what his potential is because if he does that, um, you know, we're going to have a hell of a prop that's going to be hard to stop. David, do you take any credit for getting Nellan's weight down in those brutal... Ah, no. Um, has been pretty good. Um, like, gets up every morning, does a walk bike, so he's, he's quite driven. Um, he's been going really well, and obviously, as you can see from the weekend, his, um, his ability at the set piece and his scrum stuff is, is world class, so... Um, no, it's all been big Nella. He's been going well, and I guess our journey together was was quite cool, and we both you know progressed together. But um, no, he's been so committed and, and and wants to add value to the team. Neil was sort of talking about sort of Tatiana went about six six five. I think he went about seventy five something like that. You know, when you're coming off two back back injuries like that, is it a sense of just wanting to try and get as much minutes under your belt as possible, letting into a important tournament like this? No, I'm not too sure. I just I just play until I get told to come off, but um. No, nah, it, felt, it felt good, like I felt fit. Um, obviously done a lot of work in the off-season to, to make sure that hopefully my um, transition into playing games was easier because, as we know, um, training is sometimes really hard to mimic um, game intensity. So, um, no, nah, it was just, I guess, just playing until, you know, my job was finished and, and going as hard as I could until the, until they thought I needed to come off. Just on that intensity, you 
notice it sort of rise and lift over the past couple of weeks as you prepare for a World Cup? And what's, you know, you know it's going to be really physical at the game against Georgia. Yeah, 100%. Um, our tra- we train harder than we play, so it's like in, in bits, training is um, probably the hardest part of the week. Um, but again, then that transfers into the game that then our props and uh, all our big men like Willie and stuff can all go that you know extra bit and go that 70 minute, um, go to that 70 minute mark or 80 minute mark as some of the boys were doing on the weekend too. So um, training's very, very hard in some spots, which mimics that game and gets you that fitness. And then uh, we concentrate on the, the skills sort of area. Yeah, no, definitely. I didn't think. Um, yeah, I thought it would be a bigger, a, a lot longer. The injury, because um, I did it three times. I thought, you know, I thought the World Cup was touch and go, or probably not going to be um, a thing that was going to be. I guess I could say that I went to. Um, but again, I, I took it day to day. So over that 12 months time that I only played two or three games, I sort of just said to myself, you know, I just try to get better every day, um, enjoy the process of it, and that was helped with Nella, and then. Um, whatever happens, happens. But I'm just glad I'm here. I've been given the opportunity to get better and, uh, and play games for Australia. So. And, and how much confidence did you and Tanya particularly take out of really taking it to the French for the week? Oh, yeah, a lot of confidence. But uh, as I said before, there's no one in the world like Tanya. So it's um, not not expected, but like you know that Nella's going to have that impact on a game when um, he's fit, healthy, and fresh. So he. Um, we knew, we knew deep down that um, Nella would continue to get better, and obviously he showed that you know he's against probably one of the best scrums in the world. He, yeah, you, went forward. Do you know how much about? Like, I think the last week or two, probably doing a little bit of prep for Georgia. Do you know how much about Georgia and, and what they're about? Yeah, definitely. They've got a lot of props that are in like the French rugby and stuff. So I kind of like watching that sort of thing. And then um, uh, that's the, those games and. They're obviously big men, and obviously we we already knew that we were sort of playing them the first game, and they've knocked off a few um, T1 teams this year, as um, had said Wales and Cardiff. So um, they're going to be no easy feat, and obviously at set pace they're, they're very good. So um, yeah, we'll just keep preparing how we prepare, like we we go as hard as we can. So I'm um, just excited for the opportunity, and obviously um, to to play in the World Cup's a special experience. So we're really looking forward to it. He's 140 kilos. He squats 300 kilos, and he moves almost at nine meters a second. <laughs> he's a beast. He's just like he can't really. If I was on steroids for 10 years, I wouldn't even look like him. So it's like he's a he's just a he's just a, an anomaly. He's a freak. He's is it something you can't create? He's just that's what Nella is, and we're just lucky we have him in our team. He's not playing for Tonga. <laughs>